In this Affinity Photo video, I'm going to show you how to create a fantastical composite image like this. Now I'm going to use this starting portrait here along with a range of different flower images to create my composite image. And along the way, we'll learn lots of key layer blending and layer masking skills in Affinity Photo. So let's get started here. We'll go to our starting image here. And the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate my background layer here. I can use the keyboard shortcut Command or Control and J to make a copy of it there. And I'm going to hit B for my brush tool. I'm going to hold Alt and click to sample this gray tone from the background. I'm just going to paint over the bottom part of the portrait. Again, I'll Alt click over here and uh, I'll just paint to create a sort of gray area around the bottom. I could perhaps lower the opacity of that brush just to sort of blend it in a bit more like that, just to fade out the bottom part like that. Now I'd like to cut out the subject here so that I can add flowers in front and behind her. So I'm going to do this by making a selection of the background, then I can invert the selection. So I'm going to grab the flood select tool. I'll make sure contiguous is checked up here and I'll bring the tolerance down to a fairly low value, somewhere around about 3%, and then I'll click on the background here to make a selection. I'll go up here and choose the Add option, and that way I can continue clicking to add to that initial selection, and you can see I can quite quickly select the backdrop behind my subject like this. So now I've got a good selection of that backdrop. I'm going to go to Select and Invert Pixel Selection. So I've got the subject selected instead. Then I'm going to click Refine at the top here to open the uh, Refine Selection box here. And this allows me to improve the edges of the selection. I could increase the border width. And I can also choose to set things as either foreground or background. So I'm going to choose background here and paint over this little area here because I want to set that as a background there because I missed it out in my initial selection like this. And I can continue tweaking the edges until I get a really nice clean cutout of the subject here. Then with that done, I'm going to set the output down here to new layer with mask and hit apply. And now if I just hide those two lower layers, you can see we've created the cutout of our subject on that top layer and I'll reveal the layer below and now we can start adding in our flowers so I'm going to go to one of my flower images here let's perhaps choose this one here and I can use the selection brush tool which you'll find in the toolbar over here I need to make sure I have snap to edges checks up here and then I can just paint over the flowers here notice how the selection brush sort of snaps on quite nicely to the edges of the area so I can quickly paint over the flowers and the leaves here if it picks up any areas I don't want I can hold alt and paint to subtract them from that initial selection so I can just continue in this way until I've got a decent selection of the flowers then as before I can use the refine command and increase the border width to try and get a better selection edge we don't need to be too precise about this because once everything's sort of blended together uh, the edges of of our of each image here aren't going to be as obvious so I'm going to set the output down here to selection hit apply then hit command or control and C to copy that area go to my main image and hit command or control and V to paste the flowers in and notice how uh, they appear behind the subject here so we can grab the move tool and we can drag them around like this so you can see we can position flowers behind them if we want them in front of the subject we need to drag it to the top of the stack here and then we can perhaps just rotate and position the flowers wherever we like so you can see how we can add flowers into our portrait like this. If I hold Alt and drag this flower layer, I can make a quick copy. And this allows me to just build up the effect by using the same layer in different places around the image like this. And this just helps to speed up the process of making our composite. So let's try adding in another flower layer here. So I'm going to go to this image here. And again, I'll use the selection brush tool and paint over the flower like this. These are all flowers images that I downloaded for free from pixabay.com so it's worth just doing a search for pink flowers or whatever color flowers you want to use for your project. Again I'll use the refine button and increase the border width. Output selection down here, hit apply, command or control and C to copy, go back to my portrait, command or control and V to paste it in and let's uh, position that one down there. 
we'll hold alt and make a quick copy and drag it over here let's perhaps uh, position this one behind the portrait layer so i'll drag it below that layer in the stack there and then you can see how the flower sort of sits behind the, the uh, head like this so you can see how quickly we can build up the effect and it's really just a case of carrying on in the same way by making selections of other flowers like this and then copying them in and positioning them until they all fit together in a nice neat way. So I'm going to jump forward to a point where I've continued in this same way adding different images into the mix. So here you can see I've added an array of different flowers layers and I've used masks and selections to combine everything together. And I think all that's left to do is finish off with a few effects that will help everything sort of come together neatly. So I'm going to go to this image here of this texture and I'll copy it with Command or Control and C. That's Command C and I'm at Control C on Windows. Go to the other image, Command V or Control V to paste it in and I'll change the blend mode here in the layers panel to overlay. Or soft light actually I think soft light gives me a sort of more subtle result here and then I can use the uh, move tool to tweak the position you just see how it gives me a nice sort of texture effect on top of everything like that and we could also perhaps just blur the edges here so I'm going to just hide the texture for a moment and use the keyboard shortcut command or control plus shift alt and E and that will merge a copy of all of those layers into a single layer there and I'm going to add a blur effect here so I'm going to go to filter blur and we'll use depth of field blur and I've got this set to uh, elliptical down here I'll drag the center area which is the sharp area over the face and then increase the radius and you can see that allows me to blur the edges of uh, the image like this I can tweak the area that's affected like this and that just gives me a nice sort of depth of field effect where we're blurring the edges of the frame. I'll hit apply and then turn that texture back on. And I'm going to finish off by adding a LUT, which just gives me a quick color change. So I'm going to go to my adjustment panel here. Let's go down to the LUT options here. And these are the default LUTs. You can, of course, load in others if you like. I'm going to go for this tritonope LUT and just perhaps lower the opacity of that uh, layer very slightly to blend it in with everything else. And we can of course go on to make any other tonal changes we like, but I'm pretty happy with that. So there we go, that's how to craft your own flower portrait composites in Affinity Photo.